I'm so glad that God don't listen to us silliness and our stupidity and when we go to blaming God about why did this happen and how come it happened to me amen my response here when folks talking about well how why did God let it happen to me well what about you when I was in college this girl was, said her 16 year old daughter was killed and we was in, in, in a philosophy class and she said she said to the professor I don't believe in God anymore and, and, and he said well why don't you believe in God she said because God allowed my 16 year old daughter to die and she said, if he loved me, he would not have let that happen. The professor didn't know what to say. And I, I, just, I couldn't hold my peace. I just, you know, you know how it's, it's, you see me out there. I'm in a philosophy class. I'm going to mess up my grade. I can't say nothing. And then I found, I said, can, can I say, can I please say something? Can I? He said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, what do you want to say? I said, well, I said, let me ask you a question, man. I said, you say that, that, that God didn't care because he killed your daughter. I said, first of all, he didn't kill your daughter. Number one, you should have known this opponent for everybody to die once. So you should have been expecting her to die. Whether they're 15 or 51 or 91, everybody dies. Number two is, if he, God, Jehovah, would allow his own son to die. For folk like you and me who sit here and then blame him for something he had nothing to do with, but yet God would allow his own son to die. Amen. What why couldn't he then also allow your daughter to die? Because he allowed his son to die and never complained to us when we reject him day after day. Somebody say, man, this place. How many of us have rejected what God has done? He doesn't find that a complaint. He simply keeps waiting. And saying there's a party going on. Will you come in? And we keep saying, I'm not going in. Why do you didn't go into the party? I didn't come into the celebration because I was having a good time. Young folk, y'all know what I'm talking about. You don't folk know about no good time. They be talking about, I don't understand why they won't come in. You must ain't been to a club lately. Shoot. Oh, oh. Some of us ain't been to a club so long, we don't know what's going on. And we be wondering, why don't they come to the Lord? Man. They're having a ball. And if we don't understand that it's the love that draws you. A lot of us are like the son that's home. We're so busy complaining, whining, and talking about how good we are, we can't see how good and forgiving the Father is. He forgot how good God was. He forgot that God was a graceful God. He forgot that God would forgive. He's so busy focusing on himself. And his whole testimony about what he did. Captain David and Charles said, I have no interest in what you've done. I want to know what Jesus did. Amen. Amen. Notice he never mentioned anything God did. He talks about everything he did. Yeah. Can y'all say amen? Yeah. And he said unto his son, he says, he says, son, thou art ever with me. And everything I have, verse 31, he said, everything I have, he says, it's yours. Can y'all say amen? Yeah. Now you got to get verse 32. I got four pages here. I just didn't skip all the notes. I'm just preaching through the Holy Ghost all the time. That's all right? Yes. All right. Look at verse 32. The Father says, It was me, it, is, it was necessary that we throw him apart. You got to get that. The Father says, It's necessary that we lift up your brother. It's necessary. To say to a prostitute that God loves you. I shouldn't have to say that to you. You've been saved 40 years. I shouldn't have to tell you how much God loves you and you ain't never left. You've done. I shouldn't have to remind. But he says it was necessary. Come on, y'all. He said it's a ne it was a meat that, that, that we throw this party for your brother. Because your brother has lost all of his faith. Your brother has lost all of his hope. Your brother has lost his connection to God. Because the brother come with an attitude as so many sinners do, I ain't good enough. I witness the people all the time. The first thing on their mouth, I'm not good enough to be saved. I've done too much. God won't forgive me. He said it was necessary to let him know that he's okay. It was necessary to throw him this celebration so he would understand that our Father received him. So he said, he said it was me, it was necessary that we make Mary throw him a party and be glad.
Because remember the boy who came back, his, his thought was, I'm not worthy. Come on, church. The boy said, I'm not worthy. Just make me a servant. God ain't looking for no servants. He's looking for sons. He's looking for, for, for rejuvenating and putting us back in the place. You all say something here. He's looking for somebody he can put back on the throne and give this thought to the Father in that he's not looking for a servant. The lad says, the boy, the young boy says, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Just make me one of your servants. The Father, in essence, says, I don't want you to be my servant. I want you back by my side. Come on, somebody. Until you lose one of your sons. You can criticize and judge and, and say what folks ought to do and what they shouldn't do. But if it was your son and what this father saying, this is my son that belongs in it. He, he has no faith. He has no hope. He's without any hope or expectations of that he don't even know I'm going to I got to throw him this party. And be glad. But then the father says to him, the older son who did not recognize his brother as his brother, then the father says, for this your brother, I like the father, toss it back. You said it was my son. But then the father said, now this your brother. God is saying to us, the sinner, they are your brothers. The prostitute, they are your sisters. 